Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell has been heckled with chance to retire. It's because he had some kind of a medical incident, it seems, where he froze up during a press conference, had to be escorted away from the lectern. Now he's back on the trail, and, and hecklers are chanting that he's too old and he's got to retire. I just told, uh, I just told David Beck his introduction is longer than my speech. Elaine and I are really excited to be back at Fancy Farm on behalf of the strongest Republican team we've ever run in our state. For those of you who keep count, this is my 28th Fancy Farm. My 28th Fancy Farm. I want to thank uh, Father Venters and Stephen Elder for finding a way to keep Fancy Farm going even with pork prices going through the roof. Thanks to the Kentucky State Police. Rough. It's rough for McConnell. He is a total pro politician, and so he works through it just fine. Whatever that health scare was doesn't seem to have really slowed him down all that much. He's still pretty good on his feet as far as politicians go. People are, are calling on him to retire. I'm of two minds on this. On the one hand, the guy's pretty good at wielding power. I know, I don't know, in his heart of hearts, is he really a true conservative? I don't know. I do know that he got Roe v. Wade overruled. And the guy deserves as much credit as Trump does on that point because he held that seat open amid a lot of political pressure. He held that seat on the Supreme Court open until the elections. One of the reasons Trump got elected, one of the big reasons Trump got elected, and then they got a good judge confirmed. They got a number of good judges confirmed. They overruled Roe v. Wade. So I, th I think the guy deserves a lot of credit. It, he, it is his lasting legacy. He said it's his lasting legacy. So I like him. I have a lot of affection for Mitch McConnell for, for that reason. For that reason alone, that would be enough. Now, I know he's a little old and, and uh, I was just in Hungary. The Hungarian government is relatively quite young and they're getting a lot of great stuff done. So maybe that would be good to have energetic young conservatives out, out there in the United States advancing the, the next stage of the conservative vision and not stuck in the old platitudes of the past. Okay, yeah. I guess here's my counter, though, to that point. Do we have any evidence that Mitch McConnell's replacement is going to be any better than he is? Do we have any evidence of that whatsoever? Do we have any evidence that the guy who's going to replace McConnell is more conservative, more energetic, better adept at, at wielding power. I don't see any evidence of that. The guys who might replace Mitch McConnell are John Barrasso, John Thune, or John Cornyn. The John Caucus is looking really strong at replacing Mitch McConnell as the Republican leader in the Senate. And I like these guys personally. They're very nice guys. I have nothing against them whatsoever. I'm not saying they would be so much worse than Mitch McConnell, but I don't, I don't see any evidence that they would be so much more conservative, so much more energetic and effective. I just don't see it, which is why I can't get on the whole de depose McConnell train. It's why I can't get on the depose Putin train. Uh, all the really excitable liberals, the interventionists who want to just go bomb every country on earth, they say, we need to depose Vladimir Putin. We need regime change in Moscow, to which I say, oh yeah? For what? For what? Who's going to replace Putin? None of them know. None of them have an answer to that. Some of them sometimes say Alexei Navalny, because it's the one other politician name they've ever heard of in Russia. He's the leader of the opposition who spent some time in America. Now he's in prison. It's not going to be Navalny, guys. The guy's in prison, okay? By the way, what do you know about Alexei Navalny? Nothing. Nobody knows anything about these guys. But it won't be him anyway. It'll be potentially a much more dangerous adversary a much less prudent, uh, wise adversary than Putin. I'm not saying Putin's a great guy, but if you're, if you're telling me that he's so bad that we need to bring the force of the United States to depose the leader of a nuclear form or superpower, can you at least tell me who the alternative is? Who's going to come next? No, of course not, which is how we get into these bungled foreign policy messes that lead us into quagmires for decades and decades. What's well, the same kind of thinking going on here? Show me who's going to replace McConnell, who's going to be the, the right-wing, far more conservative, far more effective leader. I just don't see it. Right now, go to hallow.com slash Knowles. It is clear that the libs are giving up their morals and any common sense. There's no better time to build a daily habit of prayer and meditation. Building a habit of prayer can help you cultivate an attitude of gratitude. Focusing on what you are thankful for 
can increase positive emotions and improve overall well-being. Hallow is the number one Christian prayer app in the United States. It's helped many maintain a daily prayer routine, and it can help you too. Download the app for free at hallow.com slash Knowles. You can set prayer reminders and track your progress along the way. Not sure where to start? Check out Father Mike Schmitz's Bible in a Year. Available on the Hallow app for brief daily readings and reflections, or pray alongside Mark Wahlberg, Jim Caviezel, and even some world-class athletes. With Hallow, you can customize a personal prayer plan that works for you. Listen wherever you are with downloadable offline sessions. Using Hallow to connect with others who share your beliefs and values can provide a sense of belonging, support, and foster a sense of community. Also, you have an obligation to your God to pray regularly. Don't forget, that helps you, but you have an obligation, okay? So make sure you go check it out right now. Hallow. Go to hallow.com slash Knowles. Get an exclusive three months free. That's three months absolutely free at hallow.com slash Knowles. Trump doesn't want a debate. Of course he doesn't want a debate. He's 30 points up in the race, and he realizes that a debate entails a lot of risk, because all these candidates are going to be taking shots at him, and not much upside. So he's going to increase his lead, what, from 30 to 33 points? That's not a lot of upside, but there is a lot of risk. If he has one of these bumbling moments, you know, a Marco Rubio glitching out kind of moment, or a Rick Perry, he forgets the third point in the series, or I don't know, any, any of these moments. They happen during all sorts of debates. Mondale during Reagan got absolutely destroyed by one debate. Uh, Trump says, okay, I don't, want to, I don't want to debate. The problem for him is his base wants him to. They're all saying, is he going to go into the debate? And I say, I don't know, if you're leading by 50 and 60 and 70 points, do you do that or not? I don't know. Should I? Okay, you ready? Poll. We take a free poll. Should I do the debate? (laughs) Well, maybe we'll do something else. You know, see, some people (laughs) say yes, but they hate to say it because it doesn't make sense to do it if you're leading by so much, but they like it for entertainment value because they're selfish. They're selfish. Okay, so he... He misjudged that one. He usually has his finger on the pulse of a crowd really well. That one he misjudged. And he misjudged it. He thought he had them because he did a little test, right? He goes, does it make sense for someone who's up by a bazillion points to debate? No. So he's thinking, oh, good. Okay, so now I can prove that my audience doesn't want me to debate. I say, okay, good. Let's do a poll. Should I debate? (laughs) This is the... uh, Caprice of crowds. They go, yes, we do want you to debate. And he's there and he goes, shoot. Oh man, he doesn't, he doesn't break his smile. The guy knows show business, show must go on. He goes, ah, shoot, ah, darn. I didn't see that one coming. Okay. He goes, no, but, and I think quite rightly, he says, you only want me to debate because you'll find it entertaining, right? And what did they say? Yes, <laughs> that's exactly why we want you to debate. He goes, yeah, okay, that's very selfish. You know, and he's kind of joking about it a little bit. But it does expose a real weakness in the campaign right now, which is everybody knows that Trump doesn't really stand to gain very much from debating. And everyone wants him to debate, including his most fervent supporters. If I were advising Trump right now, if I were on the campaign, I'd say don't debate. At least not the first one. See how it shakes out. But if I were in that crowd at that rally, you know I would have been there. Yeah, you definitely should debate. It's going to be awesome. You're going to make Jeb high five you or whatever. You're going to make fun of Rand Paul's face. I don't know. You're going to do those things that are so mean and nasty and entertaining. You're going to talk about Rosie O'Donnell. What was it? You say the only woman you've ever insulted is Rosie O'Donnell. It's going to be funny, but there's not a lot to, there's not a lot to be gained from it. So he kind of saved it there at the end. Oh, maybe we'll do something else. Okay, you guys are selfish. Come on, get out of here, you. Come on, stop it. But a bit of a bit of a misstep or a, a miscalculation, and he's going to have to play it very carefully because the other the other field, the rest of the field is going to call him a coward, and he's got to make sure the, that if if the people polling in single digits call him a coward, doesn't matter. But if his own audience, if he doesn't give his audience what they want. That's a much bigger problem. Boy, what a great clip that was. Now, mm, mm, mm. ring that bell. Subscribe to the Michael Knowles YouTube channel. We'll see you next time.